Looking to build a Node.js application that uses Redis? Let's check out how to get up and running with the popular IO Redis client. When it comes to choosing a Redis client, Node.js developers have several options. In the Redis University Redis for JavaScript developers course, we used Node Redis, one of the community's recommended clients. In this video and others to follow, we'll check out IO Redis, another recommended client for Node.js. We'll see how to install IO Redis, connect to a Redis instance, and read and write data. Why might you choose IO Redis over Node Redis? Check out the next video in this series for more details, but in short, IO Redis has some differentiating features, such as a streaming interface for the SCAM family of commands. As you'd expect, IO Redis is available from npm. To install it, use the command npm install IO Redis. To connect to a Redis server, we first require IO Redis, then create a new instance. Here, I'm connecting to my local Redis on the default port 6379. If you're using a remote Redis server, you can specify its host, port, and if required, a password. Now that we've connected, let's see how to use Redis commands to read and write data. Like other clients, IO Redis exposes a function named for each Redis command. The parameters for these functions usually mirror their Redis CLI counterparts. For example, the hincrobuy command expects a Redis key followed by a field name and an increment. The IO Redis hincrobuy function has the same signature. The result of running a command with IO Redis is then returned asynchronously through a standard Node.js error first callback function, which should be the last parameter you provide. If you don't provide a callback, then IO Redis returns a promise. Here, I'm using the await keyword to wait for the hincrobuy command to complete. I then assign the result to a variable. We'll use this approach from here onward. Let's try some more commands. Imagine I have an array of planets that I'd like to store in a Redis list. The lpush command adds new values to the head of a list, creating that list if none exists at the supplied key. Using the lpush function on the IO Redis instance, I'm passing in a key name and my planets array. Redis returns nine, the new length of the list. If I want to retrieve some planets from the list, I'll use the lrange function. Here, I'm passing in the key name and start and end list indexes. Notice that the lrange function expects the same parameters as the lrange command when running the Redis CLI. When the promise returned by lrange resolves, some planets will be an array of strings. Pipelining is a feature of the Redis protocol that allows clients to send multiple commands to a Redis server in a single network round trip. This can greatly improve performance by reducing latency and overheads associated with making syscalls. Pipelining is best suited to situations where an application can send a series of commands without requiring any results back from Redis until the server has executed every command. IO Redis implements this feature through the creation of a pipeline instance. You can then call a series of functions against this pipeline in a chained fashion. Here, I'm creating a pipeline which I'll use to queue up several hset commands in the client. The exec function then sends all queued commands in the pipeline to Redis using a single network call. Pipelines return results in an array, but you can also attach callbacks to individual commands in the pipeline as needed. Let's retrieve two of our planet hashes using a pipeline. The first element in the pipe results array contains the result of the first command in the pipeline. The second contains the second command's result, and so on. Each result is itself an array. The first element of this resulting array will be null if the command completed successfully. On failure, it will contain an error object instead. For example, calling a command on a key holding a value whose type differs from what was expected will cause an error. 
The second element of each result array will contain the data returned by the command. Here we see objects representing the hashes for the planets Venus and Earth. In this video, we learned how to install and configure the IO Redis client for Node.js. We saw how to send commands to Redis and retrieve results. Pipelining is an important performance optimization, so we explored chaining command functions to an IO Redis pipeline and how responses are received back from the Redis server. If you're interested in the code used in this video, check out our GitHub repo. You can find the link in the description for this video. To learn more about building Node.js applications with Redis, sign up for our free online course, Redis for JavaScript Developers. It's part of Redis University, our online learning platform for all things Redis. Thanks for joining me for this introduction to IO Redis. In future videos in this series, we'll look at features of IO Redis that differentiate it from Node Redis, another popular client for Node.js. Be sure to subscribe to receive notifications for new Redis videos on our channel. Happy coding, see you next time.